بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ ডিয়ার ভিউয়ার্স ওয়েলকাম টু ইউথ আওয়ার আপনারা সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমার নাম ইসহাক আওয়ার টপিক ইজ কোয়াইট সিম্পল টুডে ইউথ এন্ড বিজনেস উই উইল টক अबाउट দ্য ফেইলিং এন্ড হোয়াই ডু উই ফেইল এন্ড হোয়াটস দ্য সলিউশন আলহামদুলিল্লাহ উই হ্যাভ ইউ নো ইন আ স্টুডিও মাশাআল্লাহ ভেরি सक्सेसफुल ইয়াং ম্যান এন্ড হি ইজ আ सक्सेसफुल বিজনেসম্যান এজ ওয়েল খাজি শফিক রহমান হাউ আর ইউ স্যার হ্যাঁ আই এম ফাইন থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ভেরি মাচ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ফর ইনভাইটিং মি ইউ নো আই আম অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইউ নো আই এম স্টিল অন দ্য প্রসেস অফ লার্নিং এন্ড ইউ নো সো আই উডন্ট গেট হেড অফ মাইসেলফ সো ইনশাআল্লাহ আই উইল ট্রাই এন্ড শেয়ার হোয়াটএভার আই হ্যাভ লার্নড ইন মাই লাস্ট 10 ইয়ার্স অর সো ইউ নো আই এম ভেরি অনার্ড বিকজ ফর ফিউ রিজনস ইউ আর ভেরি ইয়ং ইউ নো আই এম নট আ सक्सेसफुल ওয়ান সো ইউ হ্যাভ অ্যাচিভড সামথিং সাম অফ আস ড্রিম you know it's proven by your track record it's not about i'm just saying it because in the studio um so by there are a lot of young people actually they're leaving university college with the degrees and then also um a lot of people don't have degrees but once they're leaving with the degrees they don't have a job unemployment is one big issue in 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 spesin tawa hamla and other places so why do you think after you know getting degrees and everything and they don't find a job or if they do a business they're not doing well why do you think it's that you see it might be it might be a bit controversial or it might sound a bit too big for me to say you know what i'm saying but um i think the way people are trained the way people are conditioned the way the whole system is education system i think is kind of programming people to kind of do something in a certain way i mean when it comes to business you know it's all about taking risks it's all about t- making calculated decision it's all about leadership it's all about inspiring people when you go back when you say look at universities they actually don't teach much of the reality it's all you know academic 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 but where is the reality when these guys come out you know they are either relying on a job or they have to do something they are not trained to do so for example a lot of people that i know they are trained to become lawyers but they are actually doing something else a lot of people are by profession or by education they are accountants but they're doing something else so i think life skill is very important or personal development and i think that's that's what that's what changed my life around is is personal development and personal development is all about you know setting goals you know having a dream um in our society people actually laugh at you if if you have a dream oh look at him daydreaming or american dreams you know but these are very important things <laughs> what's the american dream means like trying to achieve like when someone that. thinks big big yeah. then they say whoa that's american dream but actually if you don't dream then you're not li- literally visualizing it in your head and if you don't visualize it then you can't actually you can't put it into practice so you should dream you should have big ambitions you should be taking risks yes you should take calculated risk you should you know understand where you are and how much of risk you can take but you know that's what business is all about do you think also like um um for our viewers to know i mean you done very well with your sunna mask you got you, you're in a lot of busy places in wachapo you're in stratford you know um those places more like a very fancy thing isn't it and and i'm sure you got a warehouse somewhere else yes we have we have a warehouse within tower hamlet mashallah but your new project i mean that's when i said to you know you're successful your new project is you want to do a yeah way wow i mean this is is reality now for some people probably what you said it they said probably oh here we go still a dream you here know here we go here he's we go another Germany one guys. we've had three failures already now here you go there's another one you know let's see what this one does but i guess you know i just want to touch upon what you just said about the locations location is very important with business 
with any business, location is very important. I'll go, go to the airways plan and why location is also important for an airline. But if it's a retail business, you must be in a busy location. Otherwise, no point. You know, the, the strategy that we apply with Sunnah Mask is I'd rather pay more and get the foot flow. And this is why we, we're in Westfield, we're, we're in other malls and you know, we're in other good locations because foot flow is what will kind of drive customers to your shop. I mean, if there's no people around, then who are you going to target? So you should, you should take that risk and spend a bit more. And there is a reason why these places are more expensive mm. because they have a premium and they do their bit. And th this is why it's expensive. They do a lot of marketing. They do a, a lot of spending on other things. So that's why they are expensive. They're not expensive because they're just expensive for no reason. There's a in reason. the beginning, I'm sure, in the beginning, I don't know how old were you when you started your business. You are, I'm sure, a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, did you had a fail? Did you have a difficulties? And how did you overcome that difficulty? Because there are a lot of young brothers, mm -hmm. if they want to do a business. In the beginning, this, it's not always you're going to high fly, not always. No, no. no, no. You will have difficulties, but you've got to keep on doing it sure, if you have a dream. Sure. So if you before, before, before I go to that one, um, I just wanted to kind of, about this, uh, complete about this location thing. Airways, UK, we're in UK, location. UK is one of the most influential countries all around the world. And having a UK license for an airline is having a red passport, literally. You can literally fly anywhere in the world. Having a Bangladeshi passport, I'm from Bang, I, I, I'm a proud Bangladeshi, but with a Bangladeshi passport, it will pro pro barely take you to India. But again, the wow. picture that I'm you trying to draw is... You know what I was thinking you were going to say? I was thinking you were going to say, look, we're based in Manchester or, or, or Chelmsford or something like that. But you amazingly mentioned UK. UK. It is Strategically, a you know, influence-wise, infrastructure-wise, you know, the justice system-wise, you know, everything is there for a business. I mean, I don't see why in this country someone would kind of... I mean, there's a better chance of succeeding in UK in business than anywhere else, I think, because everything is there for you. You just have to go and grab it. I mean, we came to this, I personally, we, we came to this country in 1997, April the 5th, 1997, and, you know, it's a land of opportunity, you know, there is no excuse. And coming back to what you just asked, you know, why people, fa if I had any failures and, you know, what these failures were, yes, I had failures. Um, people back in the day, I mean, about 10 years ago, people would actually make joke of me saying, oh, what business are you doing now? It's like in a very funny way. It's like I used to be trying different things. So if one fails, then I'll go to another one. If one another one fails, I'll go to another one. And that's what happened. I used to buy and sell cars before. I had a sweet shop before. Um, I used to sell cassettes and CDs in, in, in Wasma fields. <laughs> and so I've done a lot of things. I mean, I, I've always had this thing in me that I wanted to do something. And I wanted to go out there and, you know, do something independently. So, yes, failure is part and parcel. But you just have to Why carry on. Why do you on. think now, because you're more mature now and more experienced, why do you think you failed in, the, in those beginning ones? W what would you do different if you were going to do I it think, now? I think having good locations is very, very important. Like with the sweet shop, we've had a sweet shop. Basically, wha how what happened is we had a car, car business. So we needed a place to kind of show people our cars in. So we didn't want to kind of bring people to our home because again, you know, it might be dangerous sometimes, you know, if, if there's something wrong with the car and you know, if someone wants to can, kind of, you know, come and get you back or something. And you know, with this business, a lot of things do happen. So we thought, okay, let's find the office. We found the office that had everything ready, like a fridge, freezer, Coca-Cola, you know, everything display. So we thought, let's do a sweet shop because it's a perfect location. But we were slowly, slowly, slowly getting sidetracked. And we shouldn't have done that. We should have stayed on our course. It's like business is like a jungle. If you don't follow your course, then you will get lost. And that's where AIM comes in, AIM's objectives. And of course, with that sweet shop again, you know, why did we fail? We closed too early. You know, two months went by, we were paying rent and everything from our pocket. And we thought, well, we're working, you know, in another place and we're just, you know, paying for the loss here. Let's close it. And then as soon as we put on like, 
you know, offers like buy one, get one free. People were like literally flooding inside the shop and, you know, taking everything. And then we thought, hang on, what did we do? You know, why did, we, why did we not do that when we started? So we thought, and then the lessons that I learned from these, you know, few experiences was, you know, don't give up too easily. Don't, don't give up too quickly because you don't know what's around the corner. Choose a very good location and stay determined and stay focused. Four things. Specifically, I want to ask you something. Do you choose your name for your projects quite different than unusual ones, like Sunnah Mosque? I mean, wha first thing, why? Sunnah Mosque, I, I, I have is to give... Catchy? Do you look for the catchy ones? Or of course. You how do you to. choose it? Do you yeah. say if you have a few names there, and do you choose one? Yeah. Or do yeah. you just... You go through a number of names, and with Sunnah Mosque, you have to give credit where it's due. It's my second brother, who's the Imam in Regent's Park Mosque now. It's him who chose it, and it was actually his inspiration, or his, it was his vision to go into a business where we, we would sell perfumes and everything that you see in Sunnah Mas is actually personally tested by him because he's a perfume enthusiast, he's a perfume fanatic, you know, he loves perfume, anything about perfume, so we, these are all personal collections that you see and I think that's one of the reasons why we, we are kind of successful because we've got good quality products that are kind of used by someone and do we you, know do our Do you product. make them yourself or do you? We, we work, currently we work with um, various labs and manufacturing facilities, but we personally don't formulate them, but we have plans to kind of make our own perfumes in our own warehouse and, you know, sell them ourselves. But at the moment we work with different people to kind of make them for us and then we retail them. All based in UK? Um, some factories are based in Switzerland, some in okay. Middle East, some within UK as well. So, I mean, people generally tend to think of perfume or attar to be like very kind of uh, traditional, but it's actually, a lot of it is made in Europe. And French have mastered it. I mean, you know, when you have these sprays, it's actually, in the beginning it's oil, and then it's made into sprays with alcohol and water and everything else. So, it's, it's Europeans amazing, and French yeah. have mastered this game and you, c you look at brands like Tom Ford and Dior and you know everyone else they are actually doing very well when it comes to oud these days. Tell me about your Stratford place I mean it's it's more like a showroom is it or is it more like a money-making machine? It's it's it makes us money of course it, it was a huge risk when we when we went into Westwood I mean the guys or the leasing people in Westwood they were saying look are you sure you're ready because you're coming from a market store and you're going to make this jump, are you sure? Again, it was my mum who literally pushed us and inspired us, said, look, go for it, you'll be all right. Within <laughs> us brothers... You know what, your house all business plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My mum actually, my mum is actually Mashallah. very, very, she's got a lot of leadership yeah. skills and I think we, we learned a lot of, well, a lot of things from mum. From, from, from um, but within brothers we would have maybe different views about different things but mum would always come and say look this is how you should do it it's very interesting honestly yeah honestly. she she really pushed us because for us like to invest nearly 100 plus thousand pounds from a you know market stall i mean we were in a market stall and we had to literally gather all this money you know, to go into Westwood, I mean, you have to, we've never dealt with deposits, that like was deposits. So when you go to Westwood, now you have to pay deposit. And then now they will tell you, oh, you can't just do whatever you want. You have to stick, t uh, stick within our guidelines. When you design a place or kiosk or a, or a stand, it, it has to be approved by us. Yes, it's your design, but it has to go through us. So a lot of things that, a lot of processes that you go through, and that's the beauty of working with these shopping centers that they train you up to be in a certain way. And that's what they did with us, you know. Make sure you pay your rent on time. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> there'll be people, you know, trying to close you down. Specifically, do you have to have the right people in that position? Because, like a customer service, that place is uh, one of the busiest places in the Europe. Yes, and I mean. there's so many people coming in. You will get a lot of um, good ones and bad ones. Yes. Some people don't like it. They don't like it. Why are you using this? Yeah. Uh, what's, what is the halal perfume? Yeah. Are you talking about halal? <laughs> no. We get a lot of that. I mean, a lot of people are not, they, they are like the way they are because they don't know what, what we're doing. And the biggest task for us in UK or as um, based in London and selling these kind of perfumes is, first of all, telling people what we're selling 
and then trying to convince them to uh, buy it and then making the sale. So we, we're doing literally three things. And you'll see a lot of new companies who are coming out, who are coming in the market. And I'd like to think, you know, we've, we've actually kind of paved the way because back in the days people said, well, what are you going to do with these perfumes? You know, these are just Islamic perfumes and others, you know. But we, we never saw it like this, you know. Perfume is perfume. Doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim. You know, you could still perfume. It's, a, it's just a different type of perfume. Do you get lots of um, non-Muslim customers? Fifty percent of our customer base would be, I would say, non-Muslims mm. and non-Asians. Very interesting, actually. Um, but um, sorry. Um, so you were saying, you know, this about this um, Stratford location. So customer service is very important. I mean, you can't look. The way we designed our business is for it to run by itself. We don't want to be kind of always watching, 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 watching. You know, we want the business to run by itself. It's like an engine that we want to create that works for us instead of us working forever wi for it. So for to do that, you need good people. You need to pay good wages. You need to look after them. You need to treat them like, like yourself. You know, you can't just treat people anyhow and, you know, expect wonderful results. You have to incentivize them and you have to look after them. They're your own people and they are kind of growing your business. So do you do you okay say uh, someone applied for a job that place especially Stratford I'm mm -hmm. talking about. How do you decide who to pick? Do you have a um, you know I'm not normally okay fine uh, not like I'm sure you don't do it like that. How do you decide you know um, choose the right person? Do you have a set Good. When we recruit people, I we like to kind of keep family to family and business to business. Like, for example, if I recruited a family member... Because the reason I'm asking you is, a lot of young people and a lot of old people is, but they have businesses, but somehow, somewhere, interlinked and then they failed. Yeah. So we want some of the, our viewers to... Uh, take some advice from you. I mean, why? You, because you guys are successful, uh, so they can take some hints from here and say, no. When it comes to business, don't mingle in within, don't. it doesn't work. Because, for example, if you want to discipline someone, and if he's someone like your brother-in-law or something, you can't speak to them the way you would speak to someone <laughs> <outside>. <laughs> There will be a problem, and then you'll destroy the whole relationship as well. So just keep it aside. Try not to you know, mix pleasure with business. When it does come to recruiting people, you should look, uh, look for attitude you know that's not something a lot of people look for they always look for like you know you know how much money is this guy going to make me the end result they s quickly start thinking about yes you should think about targets and everything else but attitude do they have an attitude that will kind of conflict with what you're doing some people actually we get some people recruiting or or emailing us it's like the way they would email us is like can i have a job Obviously, you're not going to recruit them because I'm not obliged to give yeah. anyone any jobs. And, you know, we work hard to create something. And, you know, if you want to associate yourself, yourself with us, then, you know, we would, be, we would expect to be treated, you know, just like we would ex you, someone else would be, you know, kind of expected to treat, be treated themselves. So don't expect, you know, a free job. You know, yeah. I'm not talking about myself. Any companies, I'm telling you, we, s we get so many CVs, so many emails, day in, day out. Do you know what they do? It's like one liner, two liner, they don't, know, they don't have a clue about what you're doing. And you can literally tell. It's like a copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. It does not work like this. When I build my like, contacts or business networks, because I have to do the same thing. Like when I want to you know, expand into something else, or if I want to kind of um, open conversation with a shopping mall or something, I can't just copy and paste an email. I have to see what this shopping center is about. What are they concerned about? Why is it that they want? And then you angle that con um, communication towards what the way they view things. So if you're applying for, say, boots, then please just you know, do some research in what they want to do and, you know, just mention boots mm. in, your, in your email. I like think this is one of the mi biggest mistakes for young people, actually. We had my son, he, when he left, um, he was in last holiday time, he, I said, look for a job. You need to find it and do something, you've got to learn it. If you go six weeks to eight weeks, you've got to do something. What happened, they go to local um, uh, job centers and stuff, but they just 
copy you know copy and paste and say it doesn't work give it cv and they can drop it off and they you don't even get a reply for that because they know it's all copy and paste exactly like employers are not dumb they're not stupid they know what, who they're looking for for example one trick that i use it's like when when i g um, get an email i will straight away look look through the email and say where does it mention sunnah mosque if it does not mention sunnah mosque i'm not interested why do you possibly look for that reason? Because reason? That, that shows they haven't looked into my company and that, oh. that shows they haven't looked into what we're doing. And okay. it's a generic email. Say, okay, because you've been through that. So you want to look for a job. Yeah. So, okay, Boots, you said Boots. What would you put into that? So what would you put on to attract their attention towards you? I would write the person's name if I know the name, the department, you know, about the job and how I can benefit the company. So it's, it's not about, when you're trying to look for a job, it's not about so much about you. It's more about them because they want to recruit someone to do the task they need, it, need to get done. So it's not all about you. Yes, you want to get a good job and you, know, you want to get a good pay. You know, this is not the most important thing in the beginning. It's, it's a step-by-step -step process. First of all, you need to get their attention. Once you've got their attention, they will most probably give you a telephone interview. You need to do your research before you do that interview. You need to get, say things that matter to the company. So w when you say research, what do you, what do you think they should look for in that company? They should look at the company, the mission. What, the, what does the company do? A lot of people, like we, we get applications, you know, people don't know what they have applied for. So mm. if we were to just give someone a call, say, oh, which job are you talking about? Or which company? It's like, they don't even, because they're so busy, like, you know, just sending uh, CVs after CVs after CVs, they don't know, they don't have a track of who they applied for. And this is very, this is very, you know, sad for employees, like, the guys don't even remember, like, you know, who they applied for. So if I was someone who's looking for a job, I'd first of all, obviously, make a list of who I want to target, all the guys, all the companies that I want to target, learn about them, see who they are what they want to do, what their ambitions. Like, for example, if someone came to me today and said, Brother Shafiq, you know, I know you want to expand your company to so-and-so. I know your ambitions are this, you want to be, become a nationwide brand, and da-da-da-da. And I, wanna be, I, I know you want to become a multi-million pound company. I would be like, the guy knows what I, wa the guy mm, knows that's what true. I want. Yeah, that's true. So I'm more interested in him because he will, you know, kind of, be a, a better match for me because he knows what I want already. So you think you're saying you have a more personal um, yes, definitely. touch in it. Definitely. So he feels like you know him. Yes. And he knows that actually you know about him. You exactly. Because some people, I remember I was interviewing a young man and he's a really, really um, well equipped. He helps young people to find jobs. And he said, look, two few things, you know, the, the boss it looks for is first thing they want to see honesty. Yep. One is means you've done your research and you know who you are. Sometimes they say, hey, come on, I want something really uh, real. It's Some not people real. will come and say, I'll work seven days a week. All the shifts. Trust me, who can work seven days a week? And who? And then the, you'll see slowly, slowly they're going back. Slowly they're scaling down. Uh, you know, I can't do this day or I can't do this day. So that's why you see in job applications, you see they have a disclaimer. All the information that I've given is, you know, true to the best of my knowledge. You know, it's like a oath that you're taking that you've, you've given the right information. And a lot of people don't do that. Just to get the job, they'll say everything. Don't do that. Be honest. So tell me something about failing because I want to know, um, because a lot of people do fail. Not many people do successful. Mm -hmm. So when you failed, or when you mm -hmm. had a, you didn't plan it properly. So if someone comes and does people, your friends, do they pull you back and say, I told you, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So do you get that? It's more like, it's not bullying, but it just like put you down in the floor and say, oh. so how did you, Look, it's easy for you to pick up. Or everyone, everyone likes to feel good about themselves and then about their opinions. You know, if I can get a point across then I'll feel really good, like, wow, I'm right. And everyone, every human being, they want to do that. So, yes, you have to be, as an entrepreneur, you are on a mission or you're on a path that involves risk. And you should be ready to kind of accept when people do say, you know what, I told you, you shouldn't have done it. Be humble. Don't, don't try and like, you know, say, whoa, you know, I, this is what, and this is what it is. You know, just accept it. There's, what, what, what's there to lose? Like, I'm on this mission to launch an airline. 
I can't guarantee that it's going to work. But again, if I do fail, I know my reputation is on the line. And that actually inspires me to go even further to kind of make sure it gets successful because I don't want people to... But do you, don't you feel it's a big risk you're taking? I mean, I, it's, it's massive risk. There's a lot of money involved. And there's um, a, everything is a risk. Everything is... A, trust me, you're, when you're crossing the road, it's a risk. So does that mean you shouldn't cross the road anymore? Of course you should. But you look right, left, see all the... No, no cars are there and you cross. Same with business, you know. There's things that you can do to kind of mitigate the risks, improvise, you know, be prepared. And with this project, mainly with airline business, you know, you have to look at all the risks. What's going to happen to me, you know, when I launch? I know these guys, are, the competition will, you know, try and kick me out, drive me out. Mm. What backup do I have? Do I have any sufficient backup? Do I have a strong management team that will go out there and, you know, fight and, you know, make sure you're successful? So, yes, you can do many things, you know. Yes, it's a risk. It's a huge risk. Some businesses are less risk. And some b businesses are, you know, they have bigger risk, but there's bigger benefits with it. So, yes, I'm happy to kind of go with the bigger risk and I'm happy to kind of, you know, take that risk and, you know, expect a better reward in return. Inshallah, after the break, and we'll talk about um, your new project, uh, new projects and everything. Um, I was going to ask you one more thing. How do you, because within your family, it's a family business as mm -hmm. well. How do you um, do teamwork with your, and the younger brothers and older brothers together? How, mm -hmm. do you do, how do you manage to come up with your, say you have an idea, yeah. but your older brother, younger brother, have, no, I want this, I want this. So how do you satisfy everybody? Look, um, it's, 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 I think it's, it's a lot of... I'm assuming you're the team leader. Someone has to be a team Someone leader. has to be. Look, everyone can't have their own vision. Like, you know, if five people can't have five vision, then it's, it becomes something else. It's not a vision anymore. It's, it's a, you know, what do you call it? I don't know. In Bangla, okay. they call Let it Let me labla. come back to you on that. Looks, it sounds very interesting. Yeah. You can phone us and talk about uh, business, successful business and failing business. You, if you failed, tell us why you failed. And if you're doing well, tell us why you're doing well. Because a lot of our young people, uh, we're trying to target is they left university, they got degrees, they don't, well, some of them don't have good jobs, they're probably thinking about doing business as well. That's why we collected some young men and um, all men like me to <laughs> learn something. So in that process we can do something better together inshallah. See you after the break, stay with us. Asalaamu As Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.